Alright guys, it's Amit here and welcome back to DevDreamer. So in this lesson then we're continuing our study on CSS pseudo classes. In the previous lesson we looked at um, how to apply different pseudo classes to a link. Okay, so just very quickly if you go to our CSS file, we can see that we can style the link when it's uh, unvisited, what it looks like when it's unvisited, what it looks like when it's hovered, and also the same for active and visited. In this lesson then, let's take a look at some more CSS pseudo classes that can be applied to different elements and different scenarios. So then let's go back to our HTML file. And here then, let's start with a checkbox element here. So let's say input type equals checkbox. Okay, um, let's actually throw a few break tags in here. Like so, okay. So here then on our screen we have our checkbox. If we check this, we can see that we get no styling applied. So let's change that. Let's go to our CSS file. So uncheck this for now. Let's go to our CSS file and let's just put a comment in here and say checked. Let's now um, select this input type of checkbox and you'll remember this from one of our previous videos on attribute selectors. So we just do input in brackets type equals checkbox. Okay, and then here then, before doing our curly braces, we actually want to apply our pseudo class. So here then, we're looking to apply some styling to this checkbox when it is checked. So here we do colon, checked. Now we can do space and our curly braces, and then in here we can do our styling. So when the user checks this box, what do you want to happen? Well, let's change the outline to two pixels, solid, blue. So now then, in our browser window here, if we select this checkbox, Awesome, we can see that as we select and unselect it, this styling here is applied. This two pixel solid blue outline. Okay, let's now look at another example. Let's go back to our HTML file and put another element on here. Just for a break tag in as well. So here I'm just going to do an import type of text. And we'll just say placeholder username. So we've just got some text in there. Okay. Um, and let's just put another break tag in actually here. Okay, okay. so here then we have a text box that has a username as a placeholder. And now in our style sheet, we want to apply some styling here when this text field is disabled. So at the moment it is enabled, we can click onto it and we can type away. But let's actually apply some styling to this when this is disabled. Let's set up the styling first and then we will actually go ahead and apply attribute of disabled to this. So here let's just do a comment again to show what this one's all about. This is disabled. And here we can say input type equals text and then here we do colon and this time we're looking for the disabled pseudo class now we can do space curly braces um, and let's just go for background color and let's just say light gray okay so in other words when this input type of text here is disabled we actually want to change this background color here to light gray so let's go to our index.html file and just add that attribute on so here, I'm just going to do space, disabled. And now, as you can see, our text box has this background color of gray, because that is what we specified in our CSS file whenever the text box is disabled. Background color of light gray. Okay, let's take a look at another one. Let's say we wanted to change the background color when the user focuses into this text box when they click onto it. So over here, let's just say comment of focus. And let's say input type equals text. And we do colon focus. And we do our curly braces here. And let's actually change this because I do want to keep this one up here as well. So let's change this and add a new input type in here. Um, just for a break tag in here. We'll say input type text. And for this one, I'm just going to say ID of cool. Okay. And then in our CSS file, we can select this by ID of cool. We can get rid of this. Let's say hashtag cool. So when it's focused, we want to say change the background color to, let's just say aqua. Okay. So now then, when we focus on this text box, awesome, we can see that the background color has been changed to aqua. Excellent. And finally, let's take a look at one more. Let's go to our HTML file. Put some break tags in here um, and let's just say a div tag and inside this let's do 
say five paragraph elements and let's just say hey there and copy this through okay let's head on back to our css file and what we want to do here is we want to style these paragraph elements but we only want to style a certain element so for example here we have five paragraph elements let's say i want to style the third paragraph element here how do we do that well here we do that by using the css pseudo class nth child so here let's just do comment here and we'll just say nth child and then down here we can say paragraph because that's what we're wanting to select but instead of selecting all of them we want to say colon nth child and in here then we can do a number so we can say we want to select the third one so we can say three and now we can say curly braces and we can change the color of this to orange red and as you can see now the third paragraph element here has been given a color of orange red so that is how we can select a specific element in a list of elements okay guys so that wraps things up for pseudo classes of course there are more practice these have a play around with them as you see they are really really useful for you to know in the next lesson we're going to be looking at css pseudo elements it's going to be super cool and as always i'll see you on the next one